Good morning, friends, and welcome home. Not sure where you have been this past week, either physically or spiritually. No matter where you have been this past week, whether your heart has been at peace, whether your heart has been troubled, no matter where you have been this past week, I welcome you home. Home to a place of grace, home to a place of hope. So welcome to this time of worship. Um, I am not Janelle. Uh, that's pretty plain and evident, uh, but I do bring you greetings from Janelle and her family. They have been on vacation this past week, arrived late last night, and Janelle has a bit of a scratchy throat uh, and not feeling at 100%, so she is being safe uh, and taking care of herself this morning, uh, and I get to be here. Uh, my name is Chris Giesler, and I uh, am privileged to serve with with our Moravian Board of World Mission uh, here in our office in Bethlehem, uh, but indeed uh, as part of a team that reaches out around the world. So it's my pleasure to be here this morning. Uh, I had already been planning on being here today, but just filling in for the sermon time, but my role has been increased to, to welcome you and to uh, conduct the service as a whole. So it's a pleasure to be here. I'll say a bit more about Board of World Mission and its work, uh, most especially with refugees. Uh, during the sermon time, uh, but uh, it does uh, figure into one of the announcements for this morning, and that is uh, about the benefit concert that will be coming up on Thursday, April 28th, 6.30 to 8.30 here, um, with the Benny Band uh, doing a benefit concert to raise money for the refugees uh, that we are helping to take care of uh, in Europe. Uh, all of that information is on the bulletin insert, um, and again, that will be going to help uh, the Moravian Board of World Mission with its work uh, with the refugees in Europe right now, not only in the Czech Republic, uh, where we've done most of our work so far, but also we are aware that uh, refugees are showing up in Moravian communities uh, in Germany and, and elsewhere in Europe as well. So uh, we are uh, right now using our Moravian Disaster Relief Fund uh, to help uh, in those efforts. So uh, the, the benefit concert uh, will be going uh, towards that. Um, also, again, want to make you aware of um, the ongoing Lenten uh, series uh, that will continue this week. Um, uh, uh, and Sharon, I don't know if you need to say anything more about that. Other than dinner at six and program at seven? Perfect, so that, that will be ongoing here. Are there any other announcements that need to be shared with the community this morning before we continue in worship? Hearing none, uh, we pause again to, to prepare our hearts and minds with the entroit. A bit later, you'll hear the scripture reading from Luke chapter 15, which is um, Jesus telling of the parable of the prodigal son. 
Uh, and as we prepare now to, to pray together this liturgy, I want to invite you to sort of imagine yourself being that child, <laughs> that prodigal child that had been away and is now coming home. So as we pray this prayer uh, for Lent, um, uh, I invite you to have that point of view in mind, uh, placing yourselves within um, what it means to, to come home and to be welcomed home um, by our Savior. So let Lent uh, 2, uh, on page 78, I want to invite you to stand as able as we pray this prayer together. We give thanks to you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in our union with Christ, blessed us by giving us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. Even before the world was made, you had already chosen us to be yours through Christ, so that we would be holy and without fault before you. We praise you, glorious grace, for the free gift you gave us in your dear Son. Please be seated. Lord Jesus, we come before you in humble confession. Help us conform our lives to you as the model for holy and righteous living. Forgive us for our desire for personal greatness, for our attempts to make gods of ourselves, for our willingness to exalt ourselves at the expense of others, and our resistance to serving one another as you have served us. Forgive us for making light of your obedience and sacrifice on the cross by living an undisciplined and indifferent Christian witness. Forgive us for yielding to fear rather than relying on your strength to take the risks of discipleship. Forgive us, dear Jesus, for at times we have not looked to you as our Lord and for allowing the clamoring distractions of the world to become higher priorities than you. Forgive us for yielding more to the pressures of this world than being transformed by your lordship over our lives. When we were dead in our sins, God made us alive with Christ. He forgave 
us all our sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations, which was against us and which stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. Since we have been raised with Christ, let us set our hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Throughout this Lenten journey, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, not only for the privilege of believing in you, but of suffering for you as well, so that we may also be glorified with you. Please rise. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, since as members of one body, we were called to peace. And let us be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in us richly, as we teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. Whatever we do, therefore, whether in word or deed, let us do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Please be seated. Indeed, Christ has given us so very much in this season of Lent, uh, gives us the opportunity to ponder again that gift of grace and the ways in which we need it in our own lives and to strengthen the lives of others. And so we give. We give of our offerings. We give of our very lives. We give what we can to further the kingdom of God, celebrating the gift that is ours. So we receive now our offering as it comes forward, also pondering the many ways in which we can give and serve in Jesus' name. A word of prayer. Gracious Lord, accept these gifts as they come to you. Not only the gifts within this plate, but also, again, the gift of our hearts, 
the gift of our lives, the gift of our efforts, the gift of our time. Indeed, multiply them all for use in your kingdom here and preparing us for the kingdom yet to come. Indeed, we celebrate your, your amazing grace for us on this day and simply ask that you strengthen us to give it in whatever way we can, in whatever measure that we can, knowing that your spirit empowers it all. So bless us as we give and receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We turn now to a time of prayer to lift up those things that are upon our hearts, joys, concerns as well, present them to our Lord as well. Uh, so I would invite anyone uh, to share a prayer request as needed. I know Blair already indicated she had something. Please. Thank you. So prayers certainly for that family. Any others to be shared with the community this morning? Yes. Any others? Yes, Sam. Uh, I'd like to ask for uh, prayers not only for the people in, throughout the entire country of Ukraine, but also for the people in the country of Poland, which has taken in over 2 million 300,000 refugees from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. It's a struggle to help them get by. Right. So we certainly want to keep that in our prayers. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, first, I was a Westerner. She's starting a new job tomorrow, so uh, you wish her all the best. <laughs> Prayers for you, Alice. It's good to see you. Yes? So, uh, from a co-worker, I learned about a couple that um, they, they need prayers to get over the loss of, she was carrying twins, mm. and one of the twins did not survive, and she did give birth to Finn, the other remaining twin, and he is um, very premature, only two and a half pounds, so okay. very Mm -hmm. Yes, difficult indeed. Thank you for that. Yes, ma'am. That's a gift. That's perfect. That's a gift. Others. Personally, I would ask prayers for two things in my own family. My wife's mother uh, suffered a heart attack on, this would have been Thursday, uh, thankfully a mild one, um, but it's her second. Uh, the first was about 15 years ago, So, but she got to the hospital in time. They've done uh, the catheterization and stent and the whole nine yards. She should be discharged either today or tomorrow, depending on how things are progressing. So prayers for Ruth. Um, and then, uh, again, we, we're, we're hoping we're done with COVID, but we're not. Uh, so prayers for my daughter and her family. They discovered yesterday their two young ones who are in a primary school came home with COVID. And um, now 
the whole household. Uh, thankfully, their cases are, are mild and so far, so, but just prayers that they can move through that this week fairly quickly. So, and prayers for our country and the world as we continue to deal with the pandemic. Any others? We take a moment then to pray. Indeed, gracious Lord, we are thankful for this moment uh, again to feel your embrace around us, to pause and simply know that your love is given freely uh, and abundantly, and, and we accept that love and we accept that grace and simply ask you again to, to enable us to share that with the world because that's a, a love and a grace that is transformative. Um, we are thankful that in this community we have been able to share the needs and, and uh, concerns that we have as well as the joys. And know that you will empower us to be agents of, of reconciliation and love in these situations as needed and that your helping and healing hand uh, would be at work where needed as well, using us uh, indeed to be agents of that care. So hear our prayers, know our hearts, and continue to transform our lives. And hear us now, loving God, as we together, as brothers and sisters in Christ, share the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. We hear now our scripture lesson. Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 3, and also verses 11b to 32, found on page 850 in your pew Bible. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. 
put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he, when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all the years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Bless the reading and understanding of God's holy word. And also bless all the people in the entire country of Ukraine. would say just a bit before we sing this next hymn, again, uh, that prodigal son story is the story about a son that wandered. And uh, as we sing, again, the words of this hymn, as I ask you to do with the liturgy, I'd invite you, again, this, the, this hymn gives us a, a hint of perhaps where we have wandered, a prayer of confession as well. Uh, 759, if today I have grieved my Savior's heart.
Again, my dear friends here at Calvary Moravian Church, it's good to be back with you again. I bring you greetings from the staff of the Moravian Board of World Mission here in North America, most especially from our executive director, Brother Justin Raubach. It's been a very cu busy couple of weeks for us uh, at the Board of World Mission, uh, especially since the beginning of the war in Ukraine started. Uh, we have been absolutely amazed at the outpouring of support that we have received as we seek to support our Moravian brothers and sisters in Europe uh, that are right now already welcoming refugees from Ukraine. As some of you might know, um, our, our initial uh, aid has gone not only to Church World Service, which has an extensive network of refugee resettlement, but also to our Moravian church in the village of Nova Paca in the Czech Republic. Um, the Moravian church there several years ago, uh, having outgrown their worship space, was able to buy at a relatively low cost a hotel right in the middle of the village um, uh, to use their ballroom as their worship space. Um, they had not gotten around to renovating the rooms, however, over these last few years, um, having several different plans for them and, and trying to put together money to do that. Um, but when they realized that refugees were heading in their direction, uh, they went to work quickly to try to finish that work. So we have been sending all already to them money to help them purchase things um, and materials to do that renovation as well as to to prepare a school they this congregation also has a primary school and they became aware of a primary school in Kiev uh, that was seeking a place to move um, so in fact this school uh, is coming uh, to Nova Paca with its uh, students uh, and some of its faculty they have already begun to uh, arrive uh, and so they are now holding their school on the main floor of, of this hotel building uh, and they are preparing the rooms um, to be ready to welcome 13 to 15 families there at the hotel and then additional families to be in different apartments around town. The school is already up and running uh, and uh, will continue to do so. So while our initial funding has gone to help uh, that project, we are also in conversation with Moravian congregations in Germany that are already welcome, welcoming refugees as well. We are aware that there are several families in Herrenhut already and most likely more to come. Again, with over three million refugees, they are all finding themselves to places where they can go. So um, our aid will go to help that as process as well. Just in the last two weeks at the Border World Mission, we've received over $55,000 uh, in, in donations uh, and, and more to come that we are aware of. Uh, so that money will again be divided up into those various projects. Um, again, uh, if you want to know more about it, um, please consult our website. Again, that the, the website is on that announcement. It's just simply moravianmissions.org. And even while the Ukrainian refugee situation has been front and center these last two weeks, we must keep in mind that people uh, are fleeing in violence from different, di several different places around the world. Um, we've been aware for years of refugees coming up from Central America, fleeing the violence that is a result of the drug cartels uh, controlling different areas, battling between themselves as well as with their governments. Um, and we're also aware of the refugee situation with Afghan, Afghan citizens trying to find a place to be at, at peace and safe harbor as well. The Moravian Unity offering this year is going to be given to us here at the Border World Mission in North America to try to help with this refugee situation, um, the broader refugee situation. And I understand your Joyful Noise offering for this month is going towards that Unity offering. And just a note about that Unity offering, again, each year the Unity Board, which is the, the board that sort of oversees the global Moravian Church, chooses one particular uh, need 
need to address a single gift to go to that particular need. And this year, they have selected the refugee resettlement effort. Again, this was done months ago. Um, we are honored at the Border World Mission to be the recipients of that, and uh, especially then to uh, turn around and send that money to the places where it needs to go. Among them being Bethlehem area Moravians that are already in the works of uh, welcoming uh, several, at least one, perhaps more, Afghan refugee families uh, in Bethlehem. So we thank you for that, but even beyond our refugee work, uh, we're thankful, very thankful at the Border World Mission from the support that comes to us from Calvary Moravian Church as you uh, give a portion of your offerings to the Northern Province, then a portion of that comes to us. And that collective gift is, is the single largest uh, part of our, our annual budget. And so we could not operate without it. So we thank you for that uh, effort that again, so perhaps without you even knowing it, that comes to us as well as other ministries within the Moravian Church uh, that's needed. Uh, and so we thank you for that as well. So with all of that in mind, <laughs> we turn now to where God is calling us today. Our attention to the biblical text from uh, Luke's uh, chapter 15, uh, which is a wonderful chapter of being lost and found, um, not only coins and sheep, but human souls as well. So today the story of those prodigal, uh, the prodigal son, the elder son, and the father as well. One son leaves home, one son remains loyal, but hard of heart. And then of course, at the very center of that story is the heart of love found within that father. And we must keep in mind, this is not a historical story. Uh, this is a parable that Jesus uses intentionally uh, giving us examples of how this works in real life. And so this is the very definition from Jesus as to the heart of who God is. The very definition from Jesus as to the heart of God. But before we jump into those family dynamics then uh, that, that we see at work in this, this parable, we take a moment in this hour Lenten journey to examine again our own lives. I think again that you'll agree with me that we often make decisions that can lead us far from the path of God's will for our lives. Our liturgy this morning helped us identify perhaps some of those. The hymn that we just sang perhaps helps us to identify some of those. But we're, we're mindful that we can hurt, we can hurt family and friends. We can withhold grace where it needs to be extended. We can turn our backs on the suffering of others. We can walk from the fellowship of the church. And at times we can get so far away from God's will and way that we think we can't ever get back. However, our text from Luke this morning, this parable from Jesus, assures us that we are never ever far from God's grace. We are never far from home. Now, in the previous chapter of Luke, um, we read the parable of the fig tree. And perhaps if, if uh, you're following the, the lectionary here, that might have been read this past week here. The parable of the fig tree that's not bearing fruit. And, and the owner of the vineyard says, let's just cut it down and get rid of it. It's a waste of energy. But the gardener says, no, let's, let's give it a second chance. Let, give me a year. Let, let me take care of it. Let me tend it. Let me, let me care for it. And let's see next year. And I have a feeling if the next year would have come and it still wasn't quite there, the, the gardener would have lobbied for yet another year. So that's the theory of grace that Jesus gave us in that story. But today is the practical application. And that's of that prodigal son that is bearing no fruit for his family. As a matter of fact, he's a drain on not only the finances, but the energy of that family as well. So it's the younger son that demands the inheritance and demands it now. This would be the money due him at his father's death. He wants it now. The older son, 
The loyal son stays at home and dutifully works for the father, has no intention for asking for an early distribution. Now, even today, that would have been, that is frowned upon for a child to ask their parents for their inheritance ahead of their parents' deaths. Um, but in Jesus' day, this request would have been tantamount to wishing your parents to be dead. Tantamount to wishing them dead. And in, in fact, yourself seeking to leave home with no intent of ever returning. I'm done with you. I want out. I want my money now. Any parent would have been devastated by such a request. Again, in Jesus' day, even more would be the compounding shame that that family would have been, uh, would have felt when facing their circle of friends and the broader town around them. They would have been shamed. What did they do wrong? to deserve their, that, to have their son want to walk away. Even so, with all that in mind, again in this parable, as Jesus tells us, the father grants the younger son his request. And off the boy goes into the sunset. And while life is happy for a while, it soon quickly unravels for the young man. He has lived high on the hog, so to speak, spending his money frivolously on parties and women, and then a famine hits the land. And the only thing left for him to do is to get a job feeding the pigs. And getting so hungry himself that he's wishing, oh, if I could only eat that slop. If I could only eat that slop. Now, again, in Jewish society, uh, where uh, pork would have been considered unclean, um, again, this just digs the knee knife in even deeper. <laughs> Not only has this young man shamed his family by departing, but now is working with the pigs, unclean animals. So again, in Jesus' culture and time, this would have even more radically put that son at a distance. In the midst of all of that, the young man comes to his senses, to his mind, and, and realizes that he can't keep going on, that even the hired hands back on his family's uh, farm, even they are eating at least enough bread to survive, and begins to make that plan to go home, rehearsing along the way his confession. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called even your son. And of course, the father is there camped out on the front porch of the house waiting for any sign of his son's return. And finally, one day, the boy begins those final steps down the road to his home. And as soon as the father sees the dust coming off the road and knowing that it comes from his son's feet, he runs, throws his arms around his, his son that had been gone, kisses him, welcomes him home with joy and thanksgiving, and the son can barely get his well-rehearsed speech out of his mouth before the father calls for uh, the best robe and slippers to be thrown onto his feet and uh, the fatted calf is to be killed and it's steak and all the trimmings for everyone let's start the party now not exactly the welcome the son expected the older son much as we would much as we would grumbles because God's amazing grace is so much more than we could ever comprehend. But such, again, is the grace of God. And thanks be to God that we are never again far from home, from the place of God's grace. What's being extended to that son is extended to us every day. And the world would be a better place, wouldn't it, if we could all live and see the world through those same lenses of God. Remember again that this is Jesus' very definition of, of who God is and God's way of love for the world. This is why Jesus was hearing 
complaints and grumblings from the religious leaders of his day as he dined with tax collectors and hung out with prostitutes and was not afraid to engage with lepers. Um, he was hearing about it. And so Jesus tells this parable. Jesus was hearing the grumbling of that elder son in his everyday life. And perhaps we too would have been those speaking those grumbling words. And while we could make many decisions about money, relationships, times, and who knows what else that can take us far from God's love, perhaps no de uh, decision is more impactful to our spiritual lives than the inability to forgive others. If there's a road we all travel down that takes us far from God's heart, it's the inability to forgive others. Now, we sometimes confuse ourselves by thinking our extending forgiveness is something for the benefit of that other person. And it, it is true that it can be. But most importantly, the act of forgiveness is what frees us to be who God truly wants us to be. Because lack of forgiveness, whether it comes in, in the form of, of wanting revenge or holding a grudge or whatever it might be, that takes up space in our souls. And when we hand that over, see, we open ourselves to so much more. We open ourselves more completely to the grace and love and mercy that comes to us from God and more enables us than to share it. And I know this is never easy, and we all within our hearts and souls and lives hold those grudges, hold those hurts, hold the damaged places in our hearts caused by others. So I know, I know there is a lot of work for us to do here. Part of what Lent is really all about, and I can promise you, brothers and sisters, it's well worth the effort to do so. But again, again, we are never far from God's love. It's always there waiting for us. And all we need to do is to orient ourselves towards that grace. And as soon as we do, as soon as we do, the embrace is there. And we are home. And truth be told, there are people in our lives that also need to be welcomed home as well. On a global scale, again, we've been talking about folks in Europe that are welcoming home, not folks who have wandered away, but who, who need a place to be gathered in, a need, a safe harbor. That's part of this story, too. But there are people I know directly in your lives, because I know I have them at well, that need to be welcomed home as well. There is a chance that they might not accept your invitation, even if we extend it. But doing so will enable us to stand at the porch and wait for that opportunity to embrace and extend again what's been granted to us, grace, mercy, and peace. Amen. We hear now a familiar hymn, um, and it gives us a chance to, to reflect on the words and the music of the old rugged cross, a gift to us from Sharon this morning.
that old I invite you to stand for our benediction. My friends, the party here is just about over, but I would invite you to walk out of here with the party in your heart and to invite others in to the grand party that Jesus is throwing for us. It's a, it's a place where grace, mercy, and peace is freely shared in abundance. So go from here with the love of God. Go from here with the grace that is ours from Jesus Christ. And go from here with a gift of the Holy Spirit to enliven, enrich, and motivate you for mission in the week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.